Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel today with the impending doom of some of these laws that came as a result of some legislation this year and of course the ever-growing shadow of legislation to come uh, for, for the next couple of years. I did want to draw a little bit of attention to another area, uh, perhaps another battlefront that we're going to be fighting up in 2024. To talk to us about it today, I've brought on uh, the, the legislative director for CRPA, Rick Travis. Rick, how are you today? Wonderful. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. So, Rick, I kind of wanted to talk you through this. We have, I guess, kind of a catalyst uh, that we see forming here, but I think it's a result of a larger picture. But let's talk about the catalyst first. So we've got some crazy stuff coming out of the Department of Fish and Wildlife for California. Uh, it looks like they're going to kind of do something that aligns uh, hunters and PETA, which doesn't really ever happen all that often. So can you go ahead and, and walk us through what the department is doing here uh, and why it's so egregious to bring two, two groups like that together? Well, it's, I want to make sure everybody understands, it's not just the department, it's, you know, in my opinion, the department not always willing to push hard on uh, some of the other groups that they work with. And in this case, that would be the Catalina Conservancy. Uh, the department has had a longstanding uh, philosophy of looking at ecosystems rather than a single species over that ecosystem, understanding that you know, if you go after a single species to try to make that species flourish, it's often at the detriment of everything else within that ecosystem. So there's got to be a balance. That's part of the North American model for conservation. Uh, in the case of Catalina, brief background, uh, Wrigley of Wrigley Spearmint Gum of the Chicago Cubs Wrigley family uh, actually purchased the island, uh, I think a little over 100 years ago, uh, mostly for the baseball team to have a really cool place for spring training and, and they got to do that. So for Cubs fans, that's a place you should go check it out. But uh, <clears throat> he also brought out on wildlife and there's been this longstanding argument when it comes to the Channel Islands of invasive species, non-invasive species. You got some groups who have argued that at one point there were animals that either swam across in the case of deer and pygmy uh, elephants and, and mammoths and things like that and others that say there was a land bridge, and that's been a back and forth debate for a while. But we do know that um, there are bones that have been found on the different islands of different types of wildlife that aren't there. So whether Wrigley introduced mule deer or reintroduced mule deer is also a subject of debate. But the point is, we have about 2,000 deer on Catalina Island. Um, in the past, there had been deer on a couple of the other islands, and those deer were eradicated most recently as about 20 years ago, uh, or not less than 20 years ago. Um, and that has led to what they want to do, which is bring hunters in, um, and that's what they call them, but they're not hunters. These are, are paid people out of a Connecticut-based group that will come in with helicopters. So so let's talk about that for a second, because uh, you know, you you have even a past governor of California who's who says that nobody nobody does more conservation in the state than the hunting community but this isn't even about uh conserving uh the the deer out there this is just about eradicating them so what's the difference there you have you have what's being called an invasive species uh at least by the department uh why eradicate them completely as opposed to just making sure or, or ensuring that it's a, a healthy herd well this is part of the argument that we're going to be making. There are several groups throughout the state, non-governmental groups that are concerned with wildlife, concerned with hunting, and often there is areas where we overlap with groups that are more preservation based and don't believe in hunting because we see that there are issues. And one of those is um, managing the land so that there are vibrant herds and really great deer out there. And, and don't get me wrong, there are parts of the department that work very hard on this, but as a whole, Here's some critical issues that I bring up. One is um, we often have seen the department in the case of mountain lions, for example, anybody with common sense realizes mountain lions cross freeways like the one, the 101, et cetera, because why well, we hear about it in the news when one of them gets hit, unfortunately, by a truck or a car. But yet the department makes the argument because of those man-made barriers, there are now separate subspecies that have developed over the last four or five decades of like a coastal mountain lion versus an inland mountain lion versus a this mountain lion. Well, if you were to use that same template 
in the case of these mule deer out on Catalina Island, well, they've been there for 100 years. Deer aren't swimming across from Orange County, L.A. County, because there are no deer in those areas um, next to the water that would even look at the island and go, hey, I should go swim out there. There wouldn't be a cause for it. So my point is that's been a well-established for multiple deer generations. And so that DNA probably is distinct enough if you were to use the same argument you, that we've used with cougars to classify them as their own Catalina subspecies, which would then make eradicating a subspecies a violation of some of the other California state laws. But as long as they haven't done that, then they can pretty much do what they want to. The other thing is, you know, this is over plant life on the island. Uh, we have 2,000 deer, which tends to make me think that, well, we're not managing the population. I know there's a great outfitter out there that has worked really, really hard. There is the ability to turn in your tag for a, a public land management tag and go hunt deer on Catalina, but that's only been about 200. So obviously if we knew the population was going higher, we could have opened that up more because I know there's always a waiting list out there on the island for people to be able to go exercise outright. And a lot of different organizations from the the ferries that go out there to others have worked with the hunting community and they make extra money. So there's tourism dollars. And then that money also is not coming from the taxpayer, but it's coming from the sporting public, which goes to support the conservancy and can support their efforts. So instead of having planned means of like, how do we manage this? How do we bring this into a, a really workable zone? It's just this knee jerk reaction of like, well, let's just get rid of all of them. So, so we don't have, have to have to manage it. Um, another, another issue that I think is really, really important is, Kevin, we have been working with the department along with many other, like literally over 40 other um, non-governmental organizations on the issue of chronic wasting disease. And Dr. Monk, who works for the department, has been very vocal about all the things we need to do. And one of the things that has come out of some of those means is we've got to protect California's deer from CWD that has spread throughout most of the Midwest and part of the East Coast and is only a state away from us right now from coming to California. But the most protected deer herd could be argued right now in the lower 48 is the Catalina deer because CWD is not going to be able to get across the channel on its own. It's a prion. It can't do that. Somebody would have to introduce it and our ability to keep that introduction from happening is incredibly high as compared to anywhere else in the state. So, you know, there's another argument. These deer are valuable to repopulating deer depending on how bad the CWD epidemic gets. So there are a lot of reasons why you would not want to eradicate the deer. And the, the point and timing of this concept and this plan, um, we're trying to get a copy of this over a hundred page document that has been suggested, but it's not readily available, so we're trying to get a hold of that. But this is this is just one of many areas within the hunting and conservation community that is going to be coming up, along with issues on waterways and issues on. Uh, so I mean, I'm gathering a few things here. First of all, CRPA is going to be fighting this, but uh, more so, you know, you make a good argument for the deer not being eradicated in general. You also make a, a, a good argument, or at least this is a byproduct of the argument, that this could be handled by the hunting community. Uh, the Department of Fish and Wildlife has a history of working with the hunting community. Why aren't they now? Uh, why, why this decision to bring somebody from the other side of the country to use guns that our government say are scary weapons of war to just eradicate this herd? Why do it that way and not as opposed to working with the community? I think this is something that's not just endemic to the department, it's endemic to government as a whole right now. Um, there are a lot of different agencies that are just operating as quickly and as fast as they can. I think there's no mistake by the timing. This is a time period where a lot of people are watching other things in news, like the elections and things like that's hit up. And so a lot of the uh, bureaucrats see this as the opportune time to, to move forward. I mean, and look, it takes time to manage a herd of deer. I mean, people don't realize that, um, you know, especially with fires and some other issues in the state. And then you got to manage public opinion and you got parts of the public that, you know, they love bears and bears are cool, but, you know, bears wipe out fawns. Nature, 
I wish people were out in nature more because the more you get into nature, whether you hunt or don't hunt, it's not the issue. You, you, you learn how nature operates naturally. And a lot of people want a man-made nature concept, which isn't nature. And so, you know, that's, that's part of what we're going through. And management isn't about us making it more advantageous. It's about us correcting human error to allow nature to be nature. Because uh, the, the department is going through some personnel changes. There were some potential personnel that was going to come in uh, that ended up getting blocked. Is this another battlefront that you see going into 2024 and, and the next year? Because these are not publicly elected officials. Uh, these are people that are put on a board by our governor uh, who end up you know, having the power to create regulations that affect things like our parks, uh, to affect things like uh, wildlife, as as well as our hunting uh, permissions. So is this something, is this a battleground that you see going forward? Yeah, it's a battleground. It's not a new battleground. Um, you know, and it's not just a department. Under, under every county, uh, there used to be what was called a Fish and Game Commission that was generally appointed by um, there were usually several people um, from each district in the county, you know, and then usually one or two at-large members who were um, pretty much assigned by the Board of Supervisors. And they would oversee all the local issues within the county and then work with, you know, Department of Fish and Wildlife. So, you know, on behalf of the department, that's a problem because we have a lot of uh, counties who have folded that into a parks department or something else. and that budget's become part of the parks budget and that's led to several issues across the board that we don't have enough time to get into. But um, I would say the first place where um, people watching this video could get involved is finding out they have a uh, fish and game commission within their county and go there and starting to get involved because a lot of these ideas come out from where the politicians at that level place them. So if you end up at a fish and game commission and it's comprised of all preservationists, that's not that's not good. And if it's all conservationists, I'd also argue that's not good. You need to have a balance in the room so you can look at the ideas with a 360 degree view and come to a manageable uh, area. And I think that's important to get out to the public. You know, we're not advocating that it's hunters only, no. I mean, I work on two committees that were fairly well balanced and we actually get a lot of good things done that pleases everybody. But you got if it gets imbalanced there it's going to get imbalanced down nature and that's what we're seeing in the department we're seeing at county levels and uh we got to push back so how how exactly do we push back I, I know that there are uh commission meetings where that can happen is there also any type of public forum uh where we can in general reach out to them yeah so at any fish and game commission meeting within any county or even if that has been folded into a parks and recreation at public means, you're more than um, capable of going up and making an argument. I know we provide arguments both through your office and my office all the time for public comments. So people can access those and go speak on it. Um, or if they have a different issue, you know, the coyote problem or something like that, they can go speak on it. I would just tell people that, you know, sometimes um, if someone's gruff with you in those means, don't take that. Uh, personal, just keep doing it until you get hurt because the squeaky wheel does get oiled eventually. So sometimes it takes more than one hit. But, you know, this is important because once these things become laws, they're much, much harder to to change than they are when they're just policy comments. And so I tell people all the time, got to get in there. The other one, Kevin, is something that you, you talk about in other videos, but it's, it's the elections coming up. I mean, we got over 3,500 seats. Um, and that's what a lot of people don't realize. A lot of these seats appointed. I mean, if you ask the average person voting for a board of supervisor member, they don't think they have anything to do with fishing, hunting, and outdoor sports, but they're the ones that oversee the the, the group that does. So yeah, they do. Yeah, I was actually just going to say that. I remember uh, with you going through uh, some city council issues with the uh, coyote issues that we've been, you know, having uh, multiple counties throughout the state. So these are other places that this stuff can be addressed. Well, we're certainly going to keep an eye on this and, and we're going to keep advocating for it. Rick, do you have any final thoughts? Yeah, my biggest one is, look, animals are, are amazing, but we really got to start looking in the state. Uh, they're a natural resource and we need to protect them. And anytime somebody talks about let's wipe it all out, we need to put hit the pause button and go, what are we doing? 
Yeah, absolutely. Especially like you said, when we're talking about eradication, well, we certainly appreciate you coming on and, and we'll look forward to circling back with you on this because I'm sure there will be uh, more developments coming soon. Thanks for uh, being with us, Rick. Always a pleasure. Absolutely. And if you like these videos and like this kind of information so that you can be armed going into the 2024 elections, please, as always, drop a like, share the video, uh, uh, comment down below, and also hit that notification bell. If you want to see these videos as soon as they come out, you can get a notification just by clicking on that. It helps these videos get out with you. Uh, as you can see, there, there's a lot of battlefronts here. It is no better time if you are not already to become a CRPA member. There are plenty of YouTubers talking about the lawsuits that CRPA is filing. The work is being done in-house here, and you can really help by becoming a member today. So we'll drop that link for you down in the comment section uh, so that you can do that. Thank you guys, and we'll see you on the next one.